Carl, you don't need that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, I want to uh, apologize. I have changed the title of my talk. So for those of you who come here to hear boundary layers, I'm not going to talk about boundary layers. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, more basic stuff, uh, give a uh, kind of an introduction, intro introductory course on quantitative homogenization. Uh, my student, Jinping Zhuge, who actually knows boundary layer better uh, than myself, will give a, a talk tomorrow morning uh, in a research seminar here. So I'm going to uh, use uh, both the projector and, and, and the blackboard. Uh, hopefully, that will work well. Uh, so let me just spend uh, the first maybe 10 minutes uh, give you an overview of this course, also the motivation of a study uh, of studying uh, elliptic homogenization. I'm, uh, I'm assuming you know nothing about uh, homogenization uh, uh, from the beginning. Okay, so uh, so we're going to start with the elliptic operator. Uh, it's, uh, all of you are taking a course in PDE. The first uh, operator you're looking at. Uh, is a Laplacian. So uh, we're going to write, actually, I prefer to write this as a minus Laplacian, so it becomes a positive operator. You can write this in a divergence form with matrix A just being the identity operator. So this operator arises when you try to model the homogeneous and isotropic material or general media here. So, so this is the simplest uh, elliptic operator, second order uh, you can have. And getting a little more uh, further, we can looking at a general second order elliptic operators in divergence form. So here I'm writing this in the divergence A gradient. And, and then I write this out uh, using the uh, convention that uh, the summation uh, index, if repeated index are summed, so the index i and the j are both summed uh, from one uh, through d, d being the dimension here. Okay, so here you have a variable matrix, which so the operator uh, can be used to describe properties of inhomogeneous material. Inhomogeneous meaning that when you move from point to point, the material, the property, the characteristic of the material changes. So here you are dealing with uh, uh, a matrix, a d by d matrix, variable matrix here. However, uh, in, in, in modern uh, industry and daily life, we're dealing with uh, a lot of composite mat materials. So this is actually what we're going to talk about today. So, so what is a, a composite material? So you have two uh, very different uh, uh, material. Uh, mixed together, combined in, in, a, uh, in some uh, proper fashion to create a, a new uh, material which might have the desired property. So the basic components you have here, there are at least two, one is referred as a matrix, there's a binder which holds things together. Another is a reinforcer, typically is a fiber, glass fiber or carbon fiber. And this constitutes a combined in, in some organized manner at a very small scale, a very small scale. So if you try to model this uh, using PDE, uh, here we're going to introduce a matrix uh, with a small parameter, epsilon. Uh, epsilon here represents the inhomogeneous scale. So that is the scale that these two uh, uh, material mixed uh, at here. And we're going to write this uh, matrix in the form of A of x over epsilon. So epsilon appeared, the smallest parameter appeared in the denominator of the variable x here. Okay, so before the scale here, I'm going to use a variable y. Uh, 
so this, the ideal case is a periodic case. You, you, uh, you, you, you mix two material in, in, in periodically. And, uh, and beyond that, we can talk about a quasi-periodic, almost periodic, or even a realization of a stationary random field here. Okay, so, so here, solving direct, solving PD or boundary value problem directly is, is impossible analytically. So in almost all the cases, you're gonna to have to discretize the, uh, the equation and, uh, and the change to numerical problem, prob possibly solving a, a matrix equation. So if you want to solve this uh, uh, boundary value problem for, 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 for equation, which, which, uh, 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 which whose coefficient uh, look like A of X over Y, you have to resolve your uh, decomposition in, in an epsilon scale, which could be very difficult or costly. So in the in, uh, uh, 60s, in the uh, 70s, in, in mechanics and in, uh, in, in physics, uh, there is a, uh, they have developed a so-called homogenization theory, which is that using asymptotic analysis to find some effective or averaged or homogenized char characteristics. And so here we're going to look at how do we describe this uh, theory uh, rigorously in mathematic uh, manner here. Okay, so that is one of uh, the motivation here. So going back, let's look at the the equation we're going to uh, the, uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, in this course. So again, I'm going to look at a, a, a second order divergence form. I put a minus here to make sure this is a positive operator. I indicate. I denote this operator by L sub epsilon, and writing this out in, in this form, and we're gonna make some basic assumptions in, uh, through, throughout the course that uh, the matrix will be real, bounded, and elliptic uniformly. Uh, I'll define what, it, what it, that is. And, uh, and also, uh, in order to, do, to carry out the homogenization, you will have to assume some structural conditions. Uh, smooth, smoothness condition is not enough to do uh, homogenization. So structural conditions, I mean, in this course, we're gonna just uh, look at the, the problem in the periodic setting, uh, but you can also do homogenization in quasi-periodic, almost periodic, or uh, statistical uh, homogeneous case. Uh, that's, uh, of course, uh, Charles Smart we're gonna talk about uh, next week. Uh, so this might be uh, provide an introductory uh, course to, to his course here. So, uh, so, he, so what ha what's the homogenization theory? Okay, so we look at a boundary value problem in a fixed domain omega, and, uh, and the solution is subject to some uh, boundary conditions. Uh, here we you can do a Dirichlet condition or Neumann boundary condition. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment here. And uh, again, this epsilon uh, represents the inhomogeneous scale, uh, the microscopic scale, uh, which is small relative to uh, the linear size of the domain, the, for instance, the diameter of the domain, okay? And it turns out, as epsilon goes to zero, uh, the solution of this boundary value problem has a limit. Uh, uh, weakly in H1, H1, uh, uh, the subref space, and therefore uh, strongly in L2, because H1 is compactly embedded in L2. Uh, and furthermore, the limit, in the limit function, U0, is a solution of a boundary value problem for a PDE with constant coefficients, uh, uh, L0. So in this periodic setting, we can actually write down precisely what is the coefficient of, of uh, L0, which I denote by a hat. So roughly speaking, what this means is that when epsilon is is small, very small, 
uh, although the composite, the compo uh, uh, composite material uh, is highly oscillatory in a very small scale, in the large scale, it simply behaves like a homogeneous material. So, so, uh, so in practice, for instance, you can imagine that you can think that you, you can use the limit u0 as a approximation for the solution, uh, the, the true solution u epsilon. And because u0 solves a, a boundary value problem with constant coefficient, and therefore it it's, uh, it's could be uh, uh, relatively easily calculated, computed, uh, compared to the uh, PD uh, L epsilon. So that is that is uh, uh, the homogenization theory here. Okay. So here I just simply de uh, I mean describe the the problem for the uh, a second order elliptic equation is linear. I mean the the simplest one you can have. Uh, actually, you can you can carry this process for any kind of PDEs, uh, uh, elliptic, parabolic, hyperbolic, linear, nonlinear, and uh, so what happened here? You look at the general PD uh, doesn't have to be second order; can be first order or higher order. You assume that this uh, function capital F have some structural conditions with respect to, say, this variable x here, the last one here, and you change this uh, uh, variable to x over epsilon, and you ask the question that as epsilon goes to zero, does the solution has the limit? And uh, if it does, what is the PD? What is the effective PD for the limit function, u0? Okay, so these are the uh, quanti qualitative questions, qualitative theory. Once this can be done, and then we can move on to uh, quantitative theory, that is, you c we're going to concern with, um, we know it's converge uh, in L2, maybe in LP, and uh, what is the sharp convergence rate of u epsilon to u0? And also, we'll be concerned with the regularity and the geometric properties of the solution that are uniform with respect to the parameter epsilon. So in other words, if you have an estimate, you have a constant c, and you 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 ask, can does the constant can the constant be independent of the parameter? <coughs> okay. In general, that's not possible because all this uh, regularity theory, uh, except the DeGeorge Nash theory, carries uh, some s uh, smoothness conditions. And once you have the smooth conditions, then your constants always blows up as epsilon goes to zero. Okay, it's just simply not going to be uniformly uh, with respect to epsilon. Uh, but however, we here we have some structural conditions uh, like periodicity or or moving beyond that. So that is that is uh, that is the problem here. <laughs> okay, so here. Um, in this course, I'm, I'm, we're going to simply deal with the, the, the second order uh, elliptic operator in divergence form. And we're also going to assume that this uh, uh, A is real bounded, uniformly elliptic. Uh, in other words, the matrix is positively definite. Uh, the, mu, the constant mu here is positive. And uh, we're also assuming the, uh, the, the coefficients are, are bounded. You can choose like mu so that the upper bound is mu to the negative one. So that is the ellipticity condition uh, we, we assume. The second, the structural condition here is that A is one periodic. That means that it's periodic with respect to the integer lattice. Uh, if you have a periodicity with respect to other lattice, you can always change the integer lattice by, uh, by a linear transformation. Uh, and further, if we need some small scale estimate, we may have to uh, put up uh, smoothness conditions. So, but these two conditions are totally different here. Okay. So this, this, is, uh, this is the uh, setup. 
Okay, the basic assumptions uh, we're going to deal with. So here's the plan. Here's the plan. So today. Uh, we're going to talk about the qualitative theory. I already gave an introduction. And then we're going to talk about correctors, uh, effective coefficients, uh, effective operator, compactness theorem, and also uh, prove the homogenization of a boundary value problems, uh, Dirichlet and Neumann problems. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, qualitative theory here. Uh, uh, in lecture two, uh, tomorrow we will uh, uh, looking at the problem of uh, convergence rates. Uh, so there is something called the flux correctors uh, has to be used in order to uh, derive the sharp estimate and epsilon smoothing. And then we'll look at the error estimate for two scale expansions in, in, in space H1. And, and also uh, uh, sharp convergence rate in, in L2 here, <laughs> okay? Uh, in, uh, in the last two lectures, three and four, we're gonna look at some uh, large-scale regularity. So here I'm gonna present two different approach to the problem. Uh, the first one, this was uh, uh, a method of uh, Marco Avalinda and Feng Hua Lin back in 80s, late 80s. Uh, by compactness, uh, the problem, the, the approach originated in in a, in, in a study of uh, minimal surface you you hear this morning, uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, Avalina and Feng Hua introduced this uh, this uh, approach to the study of uh, homogenization problems. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we're going to look at a different approach. Uh, to the same problem, the large irregularity problem, uh, by the method of uh, Scott Armstrong and Charles Smart uh, using convergence rates. Uh, and so this is also kind of related to what you hear already in the morning, uh, kind of access uh, of approximation uh, there. Uh, initially, I plan to give uh, five lectures, uh, but uh, it's so I write, also write the last uh, section. Uh, oh, by the way, the lecture notes are fairly uh, completed. You should have a copy uh, by now. Uh, if not, you should get a copy today here. So in the last, so each will correspond in one section. So in the section five, uh, I was going to talk about the, the, uh, the uniform uh, cardinal Zygmunt estimate uh, but uh, now you, you, can, you can read this uh, uh, yourself. Okay. All right, that's, that's the plan here. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's uh, let's look at the concept of co uh, correctors. So on the screen, you saw that, that <coughs> you saw the definition of correctors, but where is it coming from? How do th does this arise? Uh, 